Well, hello, and welcome back to Adrian's Digital Basement 2. Um, it's weird because you don't normally see my face in these videos, but I figured I'd do a two camera setup just because of what the content of this video is about. It's a video for total Commodore 64 nerds. And what you see here is my usual ZIF 64 machine with all the ZIF sockets. And something about this machine is lurking under the surface that's quite a bit different than most 64s, at least most 64s I've seen. And it has nothing to do with what you see here on the main board with the ZIF sockets. It has all to do with the keyboard. All right, zooming in on the keyboard here, everything looks relatively normal. It's just a standard bread bin keyboard, and it's one actually in really good shape because there's very little yellowing on it. But it has the symbols on the front of the keys. It's got the normal texture. It's all pretty standard. But there's something funny about this keyboard. Let me pop one of these keys off. Notice underneath here, there's something missing from a normal C64. A, there's no spring, and B, what is this weird key mount that we have going on here? I'm just gonna slide that machine out of the way and slide in another random bread bin. I just grabbed a typical one. Let's pull this F key off on here. Oh, that's really stuck on there. Come on, come off, there we go. All right, and with this off, this is much more normal here. We have a spring, and then the plunger, it just, it looks a little bit different. And, and of course, without the spring on there, if I put this key back on, it's just gonna be stuck down. So let me grab the F key off the other keyboard and I'll bring this up to the lens. You'll notice things are looking a little different here. The height of where the plunger connects to the key is completely different. And I think it's actually not only that, but I don't even think it's compatible. Let me put the spring back on this keyboard and try to put this on. It doesn't even fit. The cross mount that's on this bog standard keyboard doesn't even fit into the keys from that other keyboard. And here's the ZIF 64. I'm gonna take the F key from the other keyboard and the F doesn't work at all. Notice how low it is on there. I mean, I can push it and it is working, but it's not even connected to the keyboard at all. If I just flip it upside down, it just falls right off. So the mount is completely different and the height is completely different. Now I've had a lot of 64s come through the basement and I have never run into another keyboard like this one. It's the only one that I've ever seen. And I bought a Commodore 64. It's actually the very first Commodore 64 I ever owned. I found it on Craigslist, I think, or OfferUp, one of the local selling sites. And I went out and picked it up and it was a great 64. It worked, actually worked, I had no faults or anything like that. And it had this weird keyboard. So I wanted to make this video for two reasons. One is that I wanted to kind of show off that a keyboard like this exists. I've just never really seen any information on it. And two, I actually need to fix something on this keyboard. If I pop the pound symbol off here, which is a key I never use, you'll notice that there's actually a spring under here. Now I put that spring there and I did it because very specifically, what's underneath this keyboard plastic part here between the circuit board and the top, I don't know, frame of the keyboard are these types of things right here, which are little rubber domes. And this one is missing because I lost a rubber dome on another computer that I had and I needed to get a rubber dome from somewhere and the ones on this keyboard were compatible, so I stole it. And with this spring installed under the pound key, it actually makes the key at least behave like normal, like it looks correct. Although I can't recall if this key even works anymore. Um, I'm gonna have to pop the circuit board off on the bottom side and take a look. But I kind of remember that it, it doesn't work for some reason. I was looking through my box of parts and I found this little rubber dome here. I don't even know where this came from. And I think it should work in here, I think. Looking on the back side of the board, you can tell things look a little bit different as well. And that's specifically the caps lock or the shift lock switch here, it's round. And most other Commodores, or all other Commodores, it's square. So it's a little different in that regard. Everything else is pretty much run of the mill, like the way it mounts here is exactly the same. 
Doesn't say Mitsumi or anything on it. This writing here is from me. It says February 2018, cleaned keys. Well, let's pop this keyboard off. Now, one of the reasons why I leave it in this Ziff 64 case is it's very clean, but I also really don't like the way it feels to type on. It's a lot mushier feeling than all other 64 and VIC-20 keyboards that I've typed on, the ones with springs on them. I think that has to do with the way the rubber domes are, but I'm not 100% positive of that. But either way, don't really like it. So it sort of stays in this machine, which is a bit funny in a way because I end up using this computer a lot. Probably it's the most used Commodore 64 that I have, and yet I put a keyboard in it that I don't like. The top side looks relatively run of the mill, although I'm not probably familiar enough with all machines to know exactly if something is different. Ah, yes, the underside of the Ziff 64, you might see this and be like, what's going on there? This case, this top case was sent in by a viewer and there ended up being a crack right here in shipping. So I used some acetone and pieces of ABS plastic to weld this thing back together and it works very well. I've had no issues with that crack opening up again and it probably doesn't even show up on camera, but it's just right there. All right, let me remove all the screws on here and we'll take a look at what it looks like on the inside. And here we go, let me lift the cover. And there it is. The little uh, rubber domes have stayed stuck to the PCB, but that's the PCB on a rubber dome bread bin keyboard. One of them has stayed behind and now I realize why <laughs> the key is not working, the pound key, and that the little rubber dome that I have isn't gonna help. Is that the actual little contact is inside the little rubber dome so I guess whatever keyboard I borrowed this for, um, I stole it from this key right here. And obviously this rubber dome that I have here, if I stick it in there, it's gonna provide the feedback, so to speak, you know, from when you push the key, but it's not gonna make the key actually work. And I obviously have to be very careful here because if I dislodge any of these, I'm just gonna have to carefully place it on the keyboard like the space bar one stayed behind as well. I just don't understand. It has TKR as a brand name here, J075A0, R3220101. It's all written on the PCB there. And here's a close up of the way this looks with the sliders. They're round, they hold the rubber domes, like that key right there. It's just an unusual, an unusual thing. Oh, I just noticed that the shift lock key comes out as well. So that's round. <laughs> Didn't realize that pushed out. All right, now for reassembly, I'm gonna try to carefully place this back on here without dropping any of the rubber domes. Oh, that one is, I guess that one fell or. That one fell out. So I'm gonna place it on the key where it goes. So fiddly. Oh my God, I forgot how difficult this is to put back together. I am just gonna thread in a couple screws. I just put in two screws so I can flip this around, make sure all the keys work. The pound symbol, obviously with that rubber dome in there. Ooh, it doesn't feel very good. Obviously that's not quite the right fit for the rubber dome. I mean, it goes down and comes up, it just feels crappy. I'm just pushing on all the keys to make sure that as I place the circuit board down, some of the rubber domes didn't fall out and go sideways or whatever, you, you can feel that problem. Anyway, there you have it, a completely different and unusual rubber dome bread bin Commodore keyboard. If anyone has seen this type of keyboard before, I'd love to hear about it in the comment section below. Also, if you know where I can get a replacement rubber dome with the little contact pad in there, please let me know as well, because I don't remember which computer I had that was missing one of those, and it was more important for me to fix that other computer 
than have a working pound key on this particular keyboard because by that point I already had other 64 keyboards, not to mention the one with the springs, actually just feel a little bit nicer to type on, a little bit less mushy than this keyboard. Anyhow, it's just an unusual thing, this keyboard. So if you like this video, a thumbs up would be appreciated and hit that subscribe button to the second channel and check out the first channel if you haven't. A huge thanks to all my patrons for supporting Adrian's Digital Basement. I really appreciate it. And I guess that's gonna be it. Stay healthy, stay safe. And that is that. Bye.